Marjorie, thank you for all you do. So uh, we're all uh, elated over the uh, DOPS decision and uh, um, abortion being turned back to the states and no funded constitutional right to abortion. But just as uh, toxic to the culture was the Obergefell decision that claimed uh, marriage could be between someone other than one man and one woman. Uh, what are our chances of getting that one overturned? I'm sorry, what are you saying? What are our chances of getting that one overturned? Obergefell. Uh, Clarence Thomas yeah. hinted that that might be up next, or at least the court might decision. I think we have a better chance pass it on the Supreme Court right now, like we had with the Dots case, and we saw Roe versus Wade get overturned. I, see, I think we have a better chance there with the the balance uh, on the Supreme Court as it stands right now than we do in Congress. Now we know that the Bible tells us that marriage is a covenant uh, uh, between man and woman. That's what marriage is. Uh, but do I, do I see anything happening um, legislatively in Congress anytime soon on that issue? I don't, right, at this time. You just watched Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene admit that they have a better chance with the current makeup of the Supreme Court of gay marriage being overturned. Now, this is not necessarily something that I think most Republicans want her to admit because they've been trying to hide the ball when it comes to the issue of marriage equality. For example, Ron Johnson cited the unlikelihood that the Supreme Court is going to overturn Obergefell v. Hodges as his justification to not support the Senate's marriage equality codification bill on top of that you have other republicans claiming that it's definitely not going to happen and that they're not coming for marriage equality but that's a lie and we all know it's a lie and marjorie taylor green here is kind of giving up the game and saying yeah actually i think that there is a reason to kind of be optimistic if you're a bigot that this supreme court is going to go after marriage equality and she's correct about that it's absurd to think that they won't considering that in the dobbs decision clarence thomas literally name dropped obergfeld v hodges the decision that legalized marriage equality in this country saying we should revisit that now that the makeup has changed now whether or not they actually would overturn it i think that it is likely not necessarily a foregone conclusion but it's something that a lot of evangelicals want and since evangelicals want it and since this is a very loyal voting demographic for the republican party they by extension should want it as well now if you'll notice marjorie taylor green she wasn't as firebrand in her answer there she did say yeah you know god says or the bible says that marriage is a covenant between men and women woman but she didn't go on one of her long rants as she usually does why is that because i think that she knows that this is a losing issue for republicans so on one hand you want republicans to let their freak flag fly in a way come out against popular things before an election because marriage equality now sits at 71 percent nationally and that includes 55 percent of republicans who say they support same-sex marriage so strategically you want her to continue to talk when it comes to this issue but morally this is still bad when you're thinking outside of the you know uh, the election season because this shifts the overton window we want these bigots to feel as if it is socially unacceptable for them to talk about their bigotry. But the fact that they are openly talking about their desire to see marriage equality be overturned says that we've got a long way to go in terms of, you know, support for LGBTQ issues, even if 71% support for this issue is a lot. Like, we need to get that to as close as possible to 100%, even though 100% is impossible. As close as we can be to 100% is what we as a society should be fighting for now i've just got a remark at the guy who even asked this question to her in the first place by the way this was at a fundraising event mind your own business this is an individual who doesn't like gay marriage uh presumably because he is a bigot maybe he knows people who are gay who and he doesn't like them i don't know there are people with lifestyles in this country who i disagree with lifestyles that i don't understand but if they are not bothering me then who cares? Mind your own business. This is one thing that bigots need to learn. Mind your own business. If it doesn't affect you, then move on with your life. Same thing with Marjorie Taylor Greene. She doesn't necessarily seem as loud when it comes to the issue of marriage equality, but on the trans issue, she is as loud as she can possibly be in her venom and vitriol towards trans people. She targets them regularly and attacks them. And 
I've just got to say, move on. Like, you don't want to be trans? Great. Move on. It doesn't affect you. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene, in a different video, she got very, very explicit in her bigotry, and this time racist bigotry, in espousing the great replacement conspiracy theory. Take a look. Yeah. Joe Biden's five million illegal aliens are on the verge of replacing you, replacing your jobs and replacing your kids in school and coming from all over the world. They're also replacing your culture. And that's not great for America. She is saying the quiet part loud over and over and over again. And Marjorie Taylor Greene for the Republican Party, she's this double-edged sword because on one hand, she absolutely is able to rile up the GOP's bigoted base. But on another hand, she's so extremist. She's such a loud, far-right individual with a lot of attention that this turns off a lot of independents, people who are right-leaning, but they get turned off by this type of extremist, racist rhetoric. Now, this replacement theory, this is something that's existed for quite some time. It becomes a problem when it gets popularized and mainstreamed by figures like Tucker Carlson, who has mentioned it hundreds of times on his program, and politicians like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Because just citing the theory in and of itself, that is dangerous because we don't want this theory that is false to get popularized. But when powerful people adopt this theory, it gets dark for society. As the Southern Poverty Law Center explains, the Great Replacement can also be seen as a variation or elaboration on false narratives of white extinction that have circulated since the 19th century in Europe and in white majority countries subject to European colonization and settlement. In 1892, British Australian author Charles Pearson warned that one day soon, white people would wake up to find ourselves elbowed and hustled and perhaps even thrust aside by peoples whom we look down upon. His book, National Life and Character, launched a genre that included even more apocalyptic visions of white extinction from American authors, including the racist and anti-Semitic New York lawyer Madison Grant. Grant's own scientific racist 1916 book, The Passing of the Great Race, warned of the decline and extinction of America's Nordic racial stock. Scientific racism is the discredited pseudoscientific belief that scientific evidence exists to support racism and racially biased state policy. Grant did not write from the fringes. His book influenced the widespread adoption of eugenic policies, restrictions on non-white immigration, and anti-miscegenation laws in the U.S. in the interwar period. Grant's book had an influence far beyond North America in devising their own racist political order. Germany's Nazi regime and Hitler himself drew on narratives of white extinction and on American policies influenced by Grant and like-minded authors. So there are historical examples that tell us what happens when society adopts this white extinction slash great replacement conspiracy theory. When powerful people adopt this narrative, it leads to policies of racial antagonism, exclusion, segregation, and genocide. But yet we have individuals like Marjorie Taylor Greene proudly saying it and using the word replacement specifically multiple times to rile up the GOP's base. So individuals like her, they are deeply, deeply troubling. As much as she, I think, negatively affects the Republican Party and their image with independence, she's still a net negative for society because of all of the ways that she is corrupting the masses. And it's not just her. Fox News is also an issue, but she's using her platform as a politician, her influence as a policymaker to get people to think that they're actually being replaced. And the fear of being replaced, going extinct, leads to people to take up violence against minority communities. So Marjorie Taylor Greene, time and again, is telling us who she is and who the Republican Party is. They're enthusiastic about her. They like her. So we should believe them when they tell you who they are. This is somebody who is deeply, deeply bigoted. She wants gay marriages to be overturned. She believes in the great replacement theory. So if the GOP's base continues to elect people like this, then believe that this isn't just some coincidence. This isn't the product of voters just being uninformed. Time and again, she has told us who she is. And if they continue to vote for her after this, it's not just because they're uninformed. It's because they agree with her. They're racist too. And as a society, we have to figure out ways that we can deprogram large portions of the population, the GOP's base, from this racism and this bigotry.